Who's this active guy here? This is Sweet Pea. She's our olive python. Right. And this boy here is Red, who's our Stimson's python. Come on in, dude. And then this little girl over here is Toffee. And right. she's our Woma python. It's Toffee, a Woma python. Um, so these guys I often get on call outs as well. Um, I've had calls before saying someone has a crocodile on their property <laughs> and it's been a little bobtail. Um, but just to finish up what to do if you do see a snake and you want to get a reptile relocate, our best thing to do is to stay. Hey folks, things are starting to warm up here. These guys are now pretty warm and they're getting fairly active under all these lights. So there's going to be a little bit of fun. This is Emma. Emma and Marcus run a company called... Slithers and Slides. And what do you do, Emma? And we do reptile relocations, we do birthday parties and educational displays. And uh, on the odd occasion when we have the stock, we do a bit of selling. Okay, so um, about owning a snake, uh, you have to make sure you've got some licenses. So mm -hmm. after this video, guys, don't rush out and buy a snake because you really have to be dedicated. Um, Marcus is crazy snake man and Emma started with lizards and in fact that's how they let, met. How did you guys meet? I actually bought a lizard off Marcus and um, then I started helping out feeding the snakes and uh, got really interested so I started helping out with the displays and now we have a house full of snakes. <laughs> and they're an item now, isn't that so romantic? How many years? <laughs> um, three. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Good stuff. Alright, so introduction times. What we're going to talk about is snakes in your yard, how to... Um, you know, what they do, how they detect people, what they can do as far as dogs go, and what you can do to reduce the chance of you having them in your yard. So, introduction. We know Marcus, we know Emma. Who's this active guy here? This is Sweet Pea. She's our olive python. Right. And this boy here is Red, who's our Stimson's python. Come on in, dude. And then this little girl over here is Toffee. And right. she's our Woma python. It's Toffee, a Woma python. Okay, so um, now behind us, these guys are getting pretty active. I think we've already met Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea is really living up to her name. She is a Sweet Pea. So let's have a close look at these guys because I, I know you want to have a good look at what they look like. That's Toffee. Uh, this is Red. Red's really beautiful. He's fully grown. He's not going to grow much more than that. In fact, these guys are all fairly professional performers on stage, etc. Greats for kids' parties, bar mitzvahs, that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, and, and we have here... Uh, olive python, sweet pea. Olive python. So now have a look at sweet pea and check out the little lo um, holes down the side while he's still... She? She? Yep. Yep. Okay, and remember those... And we'll talk about those in a minute and how snakes detect our presence. Now you'll notice that Sweet Pea didn't flick her tongue so much when I was there. What was going on there? So she was just having a taste of the air and working out what's going on. And she's worked out you're nothing to chew on, so there's something there, taste. but it's not really worth interrogating any further. How do snakes sense food and what are they doing? So pythons here like sweet pea. They actually have heat pits along the side of the jaw, and that allows them to see in heat vision. They can also um, see with their eyes, and they overlap those visions. So they the, the little holes on the side that yeah. we saw? Ooh. Yeah, so that helps her with hunting, especially um, night, she can't see. Yeah. And so that helps her hunt the prey. She's flicking out her tongue, and she actually has a um, organ on the roof of her mouth called a Jacobson's organ. So she's picking up scent particles and touching it to the Jacobson's organ, which helps her work out what's going on. So she can work out if there's prey around, if there's any predators, and they all together make her a pretty good hunter. Right, so when they're going along. Now, one interesting thing is about um, how do you reduce the chance of snakes hanging around on your property? Where do snakes make their home? You're going to love this because I did not know this. What do they do as far as making a home? They don't create homes. So snakes like um, the dugites and the tiger snakes are the most common you'll get around the Perth area and they are completely solitary. Finding one does not mean you'll have a bunch of them and they don't create homes. So things like the dugite, they are a very wide roaming species so they never really stay in one spot for too long. And the tiger snakes, they move around a lot as well. They move generally about four hectares, which is about 200 metres by 200 metres. But they... So what happens when they have babies? Do the babies hang around? Here, they lay their eggs. Um, so their mating time is around October, November. And then they'll lay their eggs in late December. 
and then she'll bury them and disappear, never to be seen again. And um, then around February, March, those eggs will hatch and they'll go their separate ways. So they never actually meet their mummy? No. Oh, no. How sad is that? (laughs) Yeah, they're pretty independent. Okay. The tiger snakes are a little bit different. They actually um, have live birth, so um, they'll give birth to um, babies and then they'll go their separate ways as well. Right. The things with these guys, it's really funny. They're just a miniature version of uh, the adults. And when they're born, are they venomous? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that leads us on to the thing that all of the snake behaviour is not taught, whereas a dog is taught behaviour and there is some that's instinctual and that's bred with dogs, but if a snake is hatches out of an egg and it, off it goes, mm-hmm. everything's instinctual. Uh, instinctual, and it comes, sorry, bred, in, mm-hmm. instinct. Now, it comes down to two things that when it comes to fight, their, their primary objective is to find food, from what I've heard mm-hmm. you say. Yeah. So you'll, and also uh, they have two um, main things. It's like when they detect something, it's fight or flight. Now, as far as on the property, what can you do on your property to reduce the, st- the, the chance of snakes hanging around? Because they won't make a home. So they're actually traveling through your property. Mm-hmm. If you see a snake, they're on their way to keep trying to find food. Why do they, they do that? So um, snakes like the dugites, they follow fence lines and walls from a very young age because when they first hatch, they actually feed on little lizards like fence skinks and they find them along the walls. And as they grow older, they start feeding on mice and rats and mice and rats make their burrows along fence lines and walls. So the snakes will travel along and they'll come across a um, scent trail. I want red. You want red? (laughs) You can have him. There we go. Hello, red. And so they'll follow those scent trails and it'll often lead them to a burrow where they'll find their food, kill it, eat it and be on their way. Um, So the best way to avoid snakes hanging around is to um, get rid of mice and rats. So um, if Ah. you have an infestation of mice or rats, best thing to do is to get rid of them because then there's no scent trails for the snake to follow. And um, another thing is it's great to keep your yard clear of um, low-lying vegetations and any rubbish on the ground, basically eliminating places for the snake to hide because... once they're, if they do get in your yard, you'll be able to see them and then a relocator will be able to come and remove it very oh, easily. He's tied himself in a knot. Now, uh, it was very interesting because Emma pointed out that they don't make a home because if they made a home and waited for food, the food would all know that there's a snake in the area and they wouldn't hang around. So these guys are on the move. So if you do see a snake, he's quite possibly on his, on his way somewhere and uh, he's quite keen to keep going. So... Uh, you know, that could be one sort of trick for you. If you find a snake, he might just disappear. Now, what happens if you do find... I'm, I'm having trouble finding out, remembering which end is which, actually, just quietly. <laughs> Come on, Bubby. Come on, I got him. Yeah, oh, you, go. can, you can grab him. Now, the, um, okay. I might swap you there for a thingo later. Yep. Uh, so what happens, Emma, if you find a snake and you want to have it removed? What should you do and what do, thing, do people do that is wrong? So the first thing to do is to remove yourself, pets, kids out of harm's way. So put everyone inside and um, avoid movement because when, well, the most common ones you'll get is the dew guides. Once they see you, they'll go into a state of panic and that will um, set off their flight response. So they'll try to find somewhere to hide or try and escape. And if they can't escape, they'll try and find the squeeziest, most difficult to get to spots. And that can make it quite hard for relocators to get to because if they were to get somewhere physically inaccessible, like say decking, for example. Are these guys all friends? Um, They kind of get on? Yeah, so we don't keep them together because um, Toffee here is a can be a reptile eater. Ah, so okay. um, they're not kept together, but they're fine. Emma's got two Pomeranians hanging around the food, around the around the house, and yeah. I think these guys are kind of going, "Hmm, looks like a bit of a smack over there." <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, just on that note. Um, uh, Emma explained, and Marcus mentioned this as well, if a snake's in a location, he doesn't want to be seen. He'll hear you and he'll sense that you're around and he'll keep still, hoping you go away. Mm. Now, if you are a little person inside uh, a little house and you hear a big um, 10 ton giant outside your house, you'll stay inside your house and you'll be quiet. Then if the giant reaches down and rips the roof off, your first instinct is to run. run. So that's the flight. Now, if you can't run, what are you going to do? 
fight. Okay, the fight. So that's where the attack might come in. If you've disturbed a snake, lifted up stuff and there's a snake there, so it's important as far as houseproofing to make sure you have no corrugated iron laying around, trim your bushes, make sure the, the, the snakes can't hide under there and make a nice little, or just have a rest or go bathing. Interesting thing, you said you go around Lake Munger and there are t uh, tiger snakes and snakes around the country that you'll find in water areas. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that they'll come out of the reeds, go across the path and do a bit of sunbathing on the mm -hmm. path. And if someone comes along, their instinct is to go and hide. Mm. So I hear a lot about people saying that tiger snakes are aggressive and they will chase you. It's just a misunderstanding of the snake's behaviour. More often than not, so unlike the dewguites, the tiger snakes have learnt that movement attracts attention so they will sit oh. still. And they will stay still, hoping you don't see them. Now, if you get too close... Um, which can often happen because the person doesn't notice the snake, um, they will then flare out their um, neck, flatten out their neck like a hood, and they'll start showing off their defensive display. And they become really one-track minded, so they'll try and keep this display up and look for somewhere to hide. Now, places like Herdsman Lake, there's the patch of grass, there's the pathway, and there's the reeds. So they have to go across the pathway, which is normally where the person's standing, to get to the reeds. So they are so one track minded, they will go straight through your legs if they have to, to get to those reeds. So people will just see those, uh, see the snake flaring up at them and coming at them. Uh, and they'll go, oh my God, this snake is chasing me. And they'll run off and never look back. And the snake will just disappear into the reeds. Um, Marcus and I have done plenty of relocations with tiger snakes and we actually have videos of um, releasing them and if you stand when we have been standing in front of them and they'll just try to go past us if we then try and get in front of them they'll do their defensive display but ultimately they're just trying to get to the reeds there's um, always an exception to the rule as well so don't go writing in the comments well this happened and my blah 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 my friend got bitten but it all depends on the mm. day on the situation and how active and how they're feeling because mm. you might wake up with a headache one morning and not be reacting the same way you would do in the past so um and i hear a lot of um people going oh if you see a snake just stand still if the snake's coming towards you i never recommend standing still because if it does come right up to you and go across your foot you have to have the mental fortitude to stay still a lot of people think they can do it and then once the snake's coming at them they'll panic and more often than not they'll start to jump around and freak out just as the snake's within striking distance and the snake's cruising along not knowing any not knowing that you're not a tree or, you know, yeah. not knowing you're a threat oh, and then okay. you'll move around um, within striking range. I'll go, oh my God, there's something here and they can sometimes strike out. So I always recommend, best thing to do is if you see a snake and it's coming towards you, just take a few slow steps back and then run. You can move a lot faster than they can and they'll see you and then go, oh, okay, and disappear. So their first objective is to get out of harm's way because it, it, they're not a very... Um uh, you know, defensive sort of, they don't have a lot of things that they can do to defend themselves. They don't have arms, etc. And that's why dogs get bitten. So let's get on to why dogs get bitten and what happens because we were chatting that, um, and about 70 to 80% of dog bites uh, happen from these guys. Um, oh, no, so 70 80% of um, the dew guides or brown snake bites are um, dry bites where they don't inject venom, uh -huh. but the dogs are a lot more likely to cop a. Um, a I've lost bite one. where they do yeah, where they do envenomate because they do take multiple bites because the snake will be going along and the dogs to them the smell of a reptile is really enticing it's really exciting and so they'll go after this snake and all the snake sees is this big predator coming at them and the dog's just curious but the snake doesn't know that so the snake will try and run away and the dog gets excited because it increases their prey drive so they'll start chasing after the snake and the snake can only run so far um <laughs> before it, you know, can't get away. So that's when it will turn to striking out. And um, unfortunately, when they're biting, the dog doesn't feel any of the symptoms that the um, venom causes straight away. So they don't understand that later on that snake has caused it. So the dog's continually going in to play, investigate, have a bit of fun, and the snake's trying to get away, but he's got no choice because he keeps getting attacked. So he's turning and biting multiple times and that's when uh, the snake decides, well, I'm going to start using venom now and then that will help me um, survive. For the, um, yeah, for the dogs, it's just a game, but for the snakes, it's life or death. Yeah, oh, a so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, folks, so what we also, we've got another guest here too. Um, let, let's go and, are you able to grab him? Is he handy? Yep. This is a special guest, okay? You might see that there's... Um, a uh, lot of uh, bobtails starting to move around because things are warming up and they've obviously bred, etc. Oh, no, no, sweet pea. And um, 
So uh, dogs can go in for uh, bobtails, which unfortunately the bobtails come off second best. So uh, if you are looking at doing aversion training, which we will be talking about in future episodes, then this is another uh, little lovely critter. Now this is Emma's, who is this? This is Cherry and she's our bobtail lizard. Now these guys are going to get really excited that he's hanging around so close or are they? No. No, okay, no. good. <laughs> um, so these guys I often get on call outs as well. Um, I've had calls before saying someone has a crocodile on their property <laughs> and it's been a little bobtail. Um, but just to finish up what to do if you do see a snake and you want to get a reptile relocate, our best thing to do is to stay a safe distance away and keep an eye on the snake because they're a moving needle in a haystack. Um, if you're not paying attention to where it's going, it can disappear off your property or get somewhere physically inaccessible and it makes it a lot harder for the relocator to actually find it. Um, so, as I said, the so the best thing to do is to stay a safe distance away, um, keep an eye on it, avoid movement and um, just, yeah, keep everyone calm. <laughs> yeah, because a relocator will want to know roughly where the snake is and if you disturb it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go and then you don't know where it is and that might be a little mm. bit worse than knowing where the snake is and having it removed. So uh, now don't rush off and get a, a shovel. You're not allowed to kill snakes, sorry. You're, right. um, you're not allowed to be killing snakes unless you're in severe danger. But as Emma said... Um, Most of the time people will say to me, oh, I felt threatened. Most people will see the snake, they will go get a shovel, thus removing themselves from the they're not in danger, danger of when the they're snake, in the shed trying to find a shovel. And then they'll go back and try and kill it. And that's when they do put themselves in a lot of danger because the snake is just trying to survive and it will do what it has to. But if you, um, they are protected. Can I have so a look at the it is right. best just to get a relocator and get them removed. That's yeah. awesome. Guys, you know, we could spend all day um, playing with these and making you guys really <laughs> jealous about what sort of job I've got. But uh, we're going to be doing an unboxing very shortly, Colin style. So over here, we have got a PetSafe Big Dog remote training collar. And yes, remote training collars have been used very successfully. That's okay, I don't mind being cuddled. In the past, to teach dogs to stay away. Now, the thing is, if you do the um, do live in an area where there are snakes and your dog's been um, at snakes before, then it's important that you uh, do follow-up training with aversion training for dogs and snakes. And then, uh, if your dog has never experienced snakes, you're probably at a bit of an advantage because if they do get the correct use of a remote training collar for snake aversion, they're less likely to go near one in the future. But um, I don't know, Emma, to, Listen to Emma's analogy, it's pretty cool, it makes a lot of sense, but you know, if anyone's eaten curry, you'll know what she's talking about. Okay, let's go. Nothing is curry, I love great to love curry. <laughs> so, um, with dogs that have had previous experiences with snakes um, and have lived to tell the tale, will often think it was a fun experience. Um, whereas dogs that have never experienced snakes, doing the training is great because they learn straight from the get-go reptiles are not good to be playing around with. It's like if Colin and I went to an Indian restaurant and both got curry and um, Colin had never had curry before and I'd had plenty before and really enjoyed it. That night we get wicked food poisoning. Colin walks away going, I'm never having curry again, it's awful. Whereas I'm like, oh, I have had good curry before so I might go back again. It's the same with the dogs. If they've had a fun, fun experience with um, playing with the snakes, they, are, they can be more likely to go back to it um, later on, which is why it's important to do the aversion training and continue with refreshers as well. Yeah, it's um, they might get off lucky a couple of times, but eventually the snakes are going to be, uh, you know, might land a, a solid bite. The and, odds are uh, in their favour. Yeah, okay, what happens <laughs> if your dog does get bitten by a snake and you know it and you get your dog away and you just let the snake go? What's the first thing you should do? Um, if you suspect your dog has been bitten by a snake, get it to the vet immediately. Um, once you start showing, once the dog starts showing symptoms of the venom, it can often be too late. The anti-venom the vets use are not going to reverse any damage done by the venom. It's just going to stop it from doing any further harm. Right. Okay. Well, that speed, obviously, if you get bitten by a snake, um, is uh, is is of course the same thing to do. Um, all right, now let's come and have a look at these guys because they are pretty active. We might even bring this one forward. Um, let's bring the tiger snake forward. Um, nothing, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Holy cow, that's heavy. There we go. And no, we're not gonna stick our hands in there and rip him up and bring him <laughs> out. He's quite happy there. He's um, having a good time. Now, um, Look, if you do think there's a snake somewhere, stay away. He doesn't want to chase you. He just wants to get out and continue on the hunt. 
If you leave him stay where he is and call someone, they can come out and help relocate the snake. Um, if you are near wet areas, that's a higher possibility that mm -hmm. you're going to experience these guys yeah, particularly. So with the tiger snakes, um, unless they're unless you're within a few streets of a wetland known for having them, you're not likely to come across them. The dugites, however, very wide roaming and basically nowhere safe. Very wide roaming. <laughs> and, and folks, um, I don't know whether I've been lucky, but I've been installing dog fences on bush properties and walking through bush uh, for the last 15 years. And I can honestly say I have never come across a snake. They want to keep out of our way as much as we don't want to come across them. So if you're smart and you don't do anything stupid and, and, and you're lucky you don't do anything by accident, like lift up a piece of tin and there's a tiger snake hiding under it, trying to avoid you, and then he's got no choice but to give a bit of a strike and then off he goes, then, um, you know, leave him alone and call, uh, do the right thing, call people to have them removed. There we go. All right, we'll leave it there. I hope you got lots of questions. Feel free to send them through to us and uh, we'll have a look at the unboxing. And it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Emma. Hello, Marcus. Uh, thank you very much for, you, for the snakes and Emma. Uh, wealth of information. Uh, these are the guys from Slithers and Slides. They do snake demonstrations and there would be local snake demonstrators in your area if you want to do classrooms and schools and educationals or um, that sort of thing. So Toffee, thank you very much. Red, the little guy. Fantastic, sweet pea, great to see you again. And this is Dread. This is Dread. What a great name <laughs> for a tiger snake. And over here, sitting quite comfortably, is. let's have a look, a close up look at the Jugite because can we just move yeah. Dread out the way? Swap them. These are seriously heavy, folks. I don't know how you lift that, Gemma. All right, so this is a Jugite, very plain coloured. Usually if a, if, a, if a thing is quite bright stripes and, and yellow and, and, and you can see it, it's kind of like, don't mess with me or mm. I'll, I'll fix you up, pal. That's a warning sign, yeah? Yeah, so the dugouts do have a very wide range of colours. They can be, from, a common one is a light brown with brown and black scales, which is where they get the name spotted brown snake. Yep. Um, they can also be really dark like this one. They can be really light sandy colours, anything in between. There's some with bandings across them. When they're babies, they're normally about the size of a pencil. Wow. And um, they can be an olive greeny, yellowy colour with uh, some darker bands on them at times and sometimes a black head. Um, but when you're cleaning up your yard, the best way to um, avoid snakes from coming in is to um, block up any gaps, seal up any holes in the fence. Yep. And so when you're doing that, just keep in mind that the baby dugouts can fit anywhere that's the size of a pencil. Yeah, so right. it can be hard, but um, yeah. And trim your bushes, do mind. your gardening, do your fire breaks, um, and then uh, you know keep an eye out. And be smart, be very smart.